Hey guys, welcome back in this new video. So in these days I've been testing Fedora KDE Plasma a lot because I got really interested in testing this version of Fedora specifically and overall I can say that it's a pretty solid distro but there are still some issues that I want to talk about in this video but for gamers the good news is that performance is absolutely great and in fact, this, these videos of gameplay that you're seeing right now, they have all been recorded on Fedora with GPU screen recorder. And as you can see, they're running great. They're smooth. And I'd say that the performance on Fedora KDE is about the same as the performance that you get on CashOS. Now, I've not benched it against CashOS already. Maybe I will do it in a, a future video. But just judging by the smoothness of the games, it feels like the performance is the same that you get on CashOS. And so this is the first pro performance is absolutely great so you're not going to miss out on performance if you choose fedora kde plasma now the second pro is that it's absolutely easy to install this fedora kde plasma version has still the older installer the new installer has been added to the fedora workstation with gnome which is even easier than this one and i hope that they will make it uh, the default installer in the next version of fedora kde too but even with this installer that we still have which was the older installer it's still easy now maybe some people get confused by it, but I think I will make a tutorial on, on how to install Fedora KDE Plasma in one of the next videos. So yeah, it, it's pretty easy. So if you need some help, I will make a tutorial on it. But generally speaking, it's not hard. I've had no problems installing uh, Fedora. Even months ago when I first tried like installing Bazite, which has the same installer, I didn't really have any issues. It's pretty easy and self-explanatory. But some people still get confused by it. So yeah, I will make a tutorial on how to install Fedora KDE Plasma and it's going to be one of the next videos. And also the third pro of Fedora KDE Plasma is that it's very updated, not as updated as Arch, but it's also very stable. Like at the moment of this recording, Fedora has the kernel 6.15.4. Maybe it's not the latest, but it's like maybe the latest is 6.15.5. I don't know. Or maybe it is the latest. I don't remember what I have on CashOS at the moment. And also we have KDE Plasma 6.4.1. So they have updated KDE Plasma because when Fedora 42 came out, it had KDE Plasma 6.3. And now they have updated it to 6.4 so that's great they don't hold back the version of kd plasma so that's great that they update it and also i think i have the latest nvidia driver so let me check right now so i have the 575.64 driver which is exactly the latest driver so yeah when we're speaking about drivers and kernel versions you're always up to date which is absolutely amazing and this is what i want from a distro i want it to always be up to date with the kernel and with the driver because you get new features you get new enhancements you get new bug fixes and and that's just better than having a, an older kernel, unless it's an LTS kernel. But the thing with Ubuntu and Linux Mint, for example, and any other Ubuntu-based distro, is they do not use the LTS kernel. If you think about it, Ubuntu 24.04, when it came out, it was using the 6.8 kernel, which was not an LTS kernel. And now they have updated Ubuntu 24.04 to use the 6.11 kernel, which is also not an LTS kernel. And why are you using a kernel that is not LTS on an LTS distro? I don't know. Like if you want to make an LTS distro, follow what OpenSUSE do, where they use the LTS kernel, which at the moment is 6.12, which is an absolutely amazing kernel. It's very up to date and it's very stable and it's LTS. So if you want to make an LTS distro, use the LTS kernel. But whatever, this is another topic that I don't want to get into in this video. So yeah, Fedora has an updated kernel and updated drivers, whether they are Mesa or their NVIDIA drivers, which is absolutely a pro and I approve this. And the fourth pro, that I've discovered about Fedora KDE Plasma is that in this distro, I have the best Wi-Fi connection stability ever. So basically I have a motherboard with Wi-Fi 7 and on Arch and CacheOS, I don't know why, but the Wi-Fi connection is really, really not stable. Two days ago, I've made a match on Dota 2 and I was disconnected four times because the Wi-Fi lost the connection four times during the game. But here in Fedora, I've played a match on Dota 2 yesterday and I've never lost the connection. And also, I see this when I install games on Steam because on Fedora 42, specifically in the KDE Plasma version of Fedora 42, when I install a game from Steam with Wi-Fi, it's always maxed out. It always uses the max Wi-Fi that it can give me. Whilst on CashOS, when I install from Wi-Fi, it jumps a lot. Sometimes it's high and then a second after it goes like to 10 megabits per second then it goes back to 500 and then it goes back to 5 megabits. So, you know, that's not stable. But here on Fedora KDE Plasma, I, I've be, I had the greatest Wi-Fi connection experience ever. 
when I install a game from Steam on Fedora KD Plasma 42, I always have 500 megabits per second when I install the game, whilst on CacheOS and on Arch, I never have 500 megabits per second and it's always fluctuating. So yeah, on Fedora 42, I can say that I have the best, most stable Wi-Fi connection. And this is a huge pro for me. This is really, really a huge pro for me. But now, let's go to the cons. And honestly, Fedora 42 only has one con, in my opinion, which is the fact that Fedora specifically doesn't matter which version, whether you're using the workstation or the KD Plasma version. Basically, Fedora, and it doesn't matter which version of Fedora, it could be the workstation with GNOME or KD Plasma, they do not ship the full H.264 codecs. So when it comes to MP4 videos, for example, you don't have playback on MP4 videos. Like, you can forget about that when you, if you're not using Flatpaks, because Flatpaks have the codecs installed by default. But since Fedora does not ship the full H.264 codec, they're, they're shipping like an open codec, which is trash. It doesn't really work at all. You're not going to have video playback in like on a browser. If you're using a browser from the official repositories, you're not going to have video playback on any video player if, the, if it's not a Flatpak video player. And so this is kind of trash, honestly. Uh, it's literally, it would be perfect if Fedora had it. And I think in the past they were shipping the full H.264 codec, but recently they have stopped doing that. And I think they've made the experience worse for everybody. I don't really know why they stopped doing that because Arch and Ubuntu, they do have the full H.264 codec by default when you install them. So yeah, that's a very big con for me. But you can work around this con by installing Flatpak applications, specifically the video player and also the browser. But I'd argue that using the browser as a Flatpak, it's not always optimal. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the times it works, but there may be that little tiny use case that it's not optimal if you're using a browser in a Flatpak. But whatever, generally speaking, they're fine even if they're Flatpaks. But I'd rather use a browser from the official repositories if I can. But on Fedora, if you want to have the H.264 codec, you have to use Flatpak applications. Otherwise, you can like manually install it. It's not really clear how to. And it's also not like the easiest thing to do. And so, yeah, I think this is the worst con that Fedora could have had because it's a very big con for me. And I think for many people. So, for example, Fedora 42, for some weird reason, they ship by default a video player that is called Dragon Player. And it's like when I open a video from Dragon Player, and I'm showing you right now here, you can see here it's open with Dragon Player. I open Dragon Player and you see it's just a black screen. And this is what you get by default. Like by default, this is a bad experience. Like imagine you're a beginner, you have installed Fedora KDE, you open an MP4 video and boom, you get a black screen. And so yeah, by default they ship Dragon Player, which absolutely does not work. And I don't understand why they ship Dragon Player in the first place. It's probably a dead project and if it's not, it should still not be shipped by default because it's broken. So then I've decided to install Haruna and I've installed it from the official repositories just to see, just to test, you know. So this Haruna here is from the official Fedora repositories. So if I open Haruna, the video starts working and the issue is that it's very laggy now, not, not, not this video but like intensive videos they are very laggy like look at this look at how laggy this is and this is because it's using the open h264 codec which i think it doesn't have hardware acceleration because look at how trash is lagging but i've also installed mpv as a flatpak so this is what it looks like within mpv as a flatpak look at this look at the gameplay silky smooth super smooth because mpv as a flatpak it has those uh, H.264 codecs. It's not using the open uh, trashy codec, it's actually using the full one. So as you can see, the playback is perfect. And yeah, so I think I've said all for Fedora KD Plasma 42. It's a very, very good distro, although this con is pretty big. I don't like this con at all. And the next videos are going to be this one. The next video specifically is going to be on how to install Fedora 42 KDE. And these are the steps that I'm going to mention in the next video. And then I also want to benchmark Fedora 42 KDE versus CacheOS KDE. And also I want to bench again the NVK driver. It's been months already since I last tested it. And also I want to make a video on the best office suite for Linux, which I think is on the office, but that's not the point of this video. And so this is it. If you want me to make some videos that are not listed here, I have many other ideas. These are just the ones that I want to make first. But if you want me to make a specific video, you can ask me in the uh, comments of this video. And if it's feasible to do, I will probably make it. So yeah, if you want to leave suggestions, just leave them in the comments. If you want to leave your opinion, leave it in the comments, because right now we're at the end of the video. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, because it really helps the channel grow a lot. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a nice day.